Hi, this is Little Dwarf playing games while rambling incoherently into a microphone. Why? Well, just because I can. And I continue with Deus Ex The Fall Blind. Now, I'm apparently trying to find out some information uh, on the tyrant's plans. Mm, but first, let's look around. Uh, read the ebook. Okay, so I guess this is supposed to hand wave the fact that uh, every uh, 9mm pistol you find uh, can be outfitted with the same upgrades mm, and pretty much works the same, uh, you know, uses the same uh, ammunition or whatever. Although uh, this is pretty boring actually. Like, I, I, I prefer where when the ebooks actually delve into some pieces of lore as opposed to just giving you pretty much useless technical information because th this doesn't really tell you anything about the state of the world I'm not even sure what's the point of spending time to write this it doesn't advance any kind of lore or immersion in the world of, of the game uh, and it's not even really useful in any way, so... Well... Disregard that. Uh, let's check the computer before I leave the room. Mm, okay, so that's actually mine. Welcome you to the tyrants. Now, to be honest, <laughs> I am kind of annoyed by how obviously evil the name Tyrants is. Like, especially when you try to frame it in the context of their own propaganda, they are supposed to be the good guys, you know, fighting the terrorist groups and whatever, uh, and upholding the law or whatever. They are not policemen themselves, but they do try to frame themselves as a group uh, that, you know, uh, fights for some kind of order or whatever and if you call yourselves the tyrants then that pretty much you know establishes a lot of things about you and none of them are good so I'm not really sure what the point is here but uh, it seems pretty stupid when you think about it like it would be cool if they were called the tyrants by their enemies you know that would be understandable, but who in the right mind calls themselves the tyrants? Like, that doesn't make sense, because, like, especially if you, uh, if you take a longer while to actually think about the implications of the word tyrant, because, like, there are some words that could be seen as negative, but that you could also take some kind of pride in them. Like, for example, I don't know the word the word killer or you know brutal or you know things associated associated with violence uh, some people would judge you negatively for being associated with those words but you yourself could still be proud to call yourself a killer you could say that it's uh, you know it establishes your your prowess but the word tyrant specifically you know in its greek origin uh, it denotes a person that, uh, like, usurped the right to rule. Because what people often forget is that in the in the original Greek meaning of the word tyrant, uh, it doesn't really convey any actual cruelty or uh, you know things that we associate with the word nowadays. Uh, it just means a tyrant was someone that. Uh, that obtain the power, uh, you know, over a police or over over a city, over a city state uh, in Greece um, through illegim Ill illegitimate means. And actually, a lot of tyrants were pretty chill, like on a personal level. Uh, they were sp spending a lot of money on like circuses and you know providing for the people. 
not because they were nice, but specifically because they didn't have the right uh, to rule, so they wanted to placate uh, the people um, to keep their power. It was only later that the word sort of uh, transformed into a uniformly a negative word denoting things like cruelty, uh, despotic rule and whatever. Mm. So if you call yourselves the tyrants, then you're pretty much admitting to the fact that your organization is illegitimate, <laughs> which is kind of funny when you think about it. Okay, that doesn't really tell me much, because it pretty much repeats the information I already know, you know, um, that uh, Ben Saxon's people died during the Australian Civil War in Operation Rainbird, and that he was invited to the tyrants afterwards. That also isn't overly interesting. Jaron Namir, isn't it? It's interesting that he has a family, apparently. I wasn't suspecting that. He doesn't really look a family type to me. <laughs> this is literally this photo only cut in half. Mm. Oh, that's Gunter Herman from Deus Ex One. <laughs> My role as human target practice backs up has taken its toll. <laughs> maybe, maybe I can get that skull gun I've been asking for years. Now, it, it, it's a bit of an obsession of Gunter Herman to get a skull gun, which I'm not even sure what, what exactly that is supposed to be. Uh, I'm picturing some kind of a pistol that's attached to your head that you can fire without using your arms. Mm. Mm. Passcode to the op room. Get you update after my procedures are done. Okay, so I can probably use that later. Hmm. So it seems Gunter Herman uh, was at the time also part of the tyrants, or at least on a friendly foot with them, which is kind of interesting. It's a cool callback and back to Deus Ex One. Mm, auto secretary. What's the difference between a pocket secretary and an auto secretary? Well, I guess I'm going you. to. You're the one pulled me from the creek bed. You would have died. That would have been a waste. Thanks. I did it because it was the right thing to do, and because it seems fate deemed it right. Never believed in that stuff myself. You no. Know, I'm a great believer in the notion of right place, right time. Right man, Mr. Saxon. And that is you at this moment. Hmm. Okay, so I guess this is just uh, a voiced version of a pocket secretary. And this was Jaron the Mere talking about saving Ben Saxon's life. Hmm. Life regrets. Interesting book to have. Uh, let's read his computer. It's strange that it isn't encrypted, but I guess he might think that, you know, the tyrants are so close of an ally to him that he doesn't suspect them of sneaking into his quarters and read his emails. Broinski, Broinski? Broinski is actually a Polish surname, by the way. Not that it matters to any of you, but... Mm. Joe Reckler's unfortunate death. Uh, seeking replacement. Oh, so apparently there there was some member of the tyrants that has died, and they chosen uh, Ben Saxon t 
to act as, as his replacement afterwards. And special Air Service and the Surf Bell Tower as team leader. Fine addition to the team. Will be fully committed to the tyrant. Okay, so I'm calling it now actually. Mm, uh, although it was already kind of implied in the intro, but this only seems to kind of further complain, uh, you know, further confirm it. Mm, it was actually the tyrants that killed uh, Ben Saxon's team and then blamed it on their enemies to convince him to join them out of a desire for revenge because it says you can be assured that Saxon will be fully committed to the tyrants in the future. So this is implying that Namir, uh, at the point of, uh, of writing this, um, has already devised this plan to uh, provide Ben Saxon with the um, uh, like motivation for joining the tyrants. So it's probably them that killed uh, his mates in the first place and the game is, a, is going to be about finding that out, you know. Interesting. Okay, I can can open this as well. And apparently it's ba Barrett's room. So this is Namir's. This is mine. Mm. This is Barrett. Can I talk with him? Barrett, no offense, mate, but next time I'll jump when I damn well want to. What? You afraid of heights, tough guy? I guess you're gun shy too, huh? Mm. It's kind of annoying that it doesn't show me the uh, what w you know the the gist of what I'm going to say unless I click and I'm kind of scared to click it at first because I'm scared that it'll outright choose the option but I think push comes to shove I'm going to go with challenge just because I think Barrett would uh, respect it more mm. okay so I, at least I don't think with my weapon. And what would he say if I chose this? Yeah, I'm going to choose challenge just because it seems more interesting. At least I don't think with my weapon. I had Kantarski cold. I was in control. You're here to follow orders, not improvise. Next time you go off book, we'll leave your sorry ass for the Ruskies. <laughs> okay. Well, that didn't really... As much as I like your company, I don't have time to chat. Namir wants me to follow up on the debrief with him. Get the hell out of my face. That didn't really amount to much. Although, it's cool how I never really uh, paid that much, much attention to it in Human Revolution. But now, you can, if you close in to Barrett, you can see, you know, what kind of a powerhouse he is. Like, he's literally a head taller than Ben Saxon. I'm, I'm you know... If I look straight forward, I'm looking at his chest, and to look at his face, I have to look all the way up. That's kind of cool to see. Uh, anything interesting in his quarters? Mm, sports. Guns blazing. Now that does seem like a book that he would be into. Uh, although, to be honest, I'm kind of surprised he's into books at all. You'd think he would prefer a movie or, or something. Mm. Yeah, and this is Fedorova. Mm, there's an ebook. So let's check it. And glass shield cloaking system. Yeah, I, I guess this is a callback to Human Revolution because she was, uh, you know, her unique. Mm, sort of ability when you battled her was the fact that she had the cloaking aug uh, argument and used it quite prolifically during the boss fight. I must admit, I don't really understand uh, the, the, the practical way uh, it's supposed to work uh, based on this uh, techno-scientific mumbo-jumbo here, because uh, what would EM radiation... 
around the user. Like, how is it supposed to work from a practical standpoint? I imagined it was some kind of... Because <laughs> it, it is literal invisibility. It isn't the fact that uh, it, uh, you know, coats your heat signature or something it makes you invisible to the sensors. It makes you literally invisible. Mm. Um, layered directly beneath the surface of the epidermis. Mm. So, so I suppose it's some kind of a light refraction system, uh, you know, like like tiny mirrors all over your skin or something. And the way they, if you enable it, mm, they reflect light in such a way that you seem to not be there or something. Well, let's talk to her. <laughs> well, I guess n I guess not. Okay, as much as I am disappointed, I'm not able to talk with them some more, because I would very much like to learn more about them. I guess maybe there will be time um, later on. Uh, I must say this was kind of hilarious. <laughs> Mm. Oh, and he has, she has a box of knives uh, right next to her. But what is not hilarious, but is kind of weird, is her feet. Like, I am pretty disturbed by them. Well, I think that's all to be done in this part. I got into the control center and forced access to the Mia's computer. He used a program called the Killing Floor to get his orders. Yeah, yeah, but before I do that, I want to just check the other rooms. Just to be sure I didn't overlook something interesting. Mm, okay, so this is some kind of a briefing room. Mm, auto hacker, that could, can be useful later on. Uh, pocket secretary, let's read that. Job well done from Namir to Barrett. A raid on Sarif Industries is crucial for success. Oh! Interesting. Hmm. So, I guess... <laughs> I guess... This might be... Uh, implying that is that this part of the game is running consecutively? with, uh, or wait, that's not the right word. What I meant is simultaneously with the event, with the events of human revolution, because obviously the attack, the raid on Sarif Industries was something um, uh, that happened in the intro of, um, of human revolution itself. Um, but then there was uh, like a six month gap um, when Jensen uh, recovered, so I guess maybe this game takes place in that gap. It's interesting. I'm glad that I picked that up. Uh, Auto secretary. Where are you? Are you Bell Tower? I have a far wider remit than Bell Tower associates. You wouldn't know the name of my group, and that's exactly how we like it to be. I suppose you could call me a freelancer if you really felt the need to have a label. We share a similar past, you and I. Both of us have worked under, shall we say, special conditions for our respective homelands. I wonder, would you allow me to make an observation? Feel free. You're wasting your potential here. Bell Tower offers a good career for men like us. I don't dispute that. But the chance to really accomplish something, to make a difference, to bring order to a chaotic world. Bell Tower can't do that. Hmm. Okay, so I guess this is a recording from the time when Ben Saxon was still work working with Bell Tower, but I can't really put my finger on who the other person is supposed to be. Like, do I even know, know it at this point? Okay, so I'm going to need to have to hack it. Ah, okay, that's kind of trivial. 
Orders from where? Well, I'm going to probably learn that mm, soon enough, but first, is there anything else here? Mm, I think not. I'm not sure, but I found the recon report for Operation Rainbird. Two versions of it. One which said our flight path was safe, clear of drone activity, and another which told the truth. We were sent straight into a kill zone. Kontarski had nothing to do with it. Yeah, to be honest, uh, that's exactly what I, you know, imagined. But to be honest, it was revealed very quickly. I thought uh, the game would drag it out a lot more, but it seems uh, the falling out with the tyrants is going to happen in the intro. And then the rest of the game will be about, you know, trying to, uh, mm, trying to directly confront them. I was imagining it was going to be like the fact that most of the game would be some kind of a slow boil uh, uncovering of the secrets of the tyrants, but apparently not. Yeah, yeah, it says approved. <coughs> Excuse me, approved rainbow. So confirms that they did it. Okay. To be honest, it's kind of stupid for Ben Saxon to just go and confront Jason Namir directly uh, when he's still um, on, on the jet with the other tyrants because obviously they outnumber him uh, 3 to 1 at this point and it's surely bound to not end well but I guess I don't really have a choice do I? And again, it's kind of weird that even in his personal quarters, uh, with the very important information uh, that was supposed to be confidential, his uh, computer wasn't really locked. It I wasn't have to find Amir to find out. It wasn't password protected or anything? You're trying to recruit me. I read the after-action report on the failure of Operation Ringbird. You survived against very long odds, Mr. Saxon. I'm quite impressed. They could use someone with your skill set. I find myself a man down after a recent incident, and you make a good candidate. Interesting. Maybe if you told me who the hell you are. I told you, the name Try me. I am Yaron Namir, field commander of a non-aligned special operations unit known as the Tyrants. We are an elite, independent, self-financing group dedicated to maintaining global stability through covert means. A rogue cell. Tyrants. That name doesn't exactly have a ring of righteousness to it. <laughs> I beg to differ. The true meaning of the word stems from the Greek Turanos. It was only later the name gathered its negative connotations. In its original form, the term describes those who take power by their own means, instead of being awarded it through birthright or elective. That is what we do, Mr. Saxon. We take power from those who abuse it. We restore the balance. Out of the goodness of your heart, Bill Tower's failures cost you the lives of the men and women in your unit. Are you really ready to go back to them, knowing that? Be honest with me, Mr. Saxon. Are you ever going to trust your employers again? I have a responsibility. I signed a contract. One that is near to ending. We can deal with that if only a piece of paper is stopping you. Believe me, I can make that go away. This offer won't come again. And if you decide to go looking for us after the fact, I warn you, there will be consequences. We can give you what you need, Ben. 
The tyrants help their own. Okay, so that was very interesting, and I actually give the game a massive kudos for directly sort of responding to my earlier thoughts about the name Tyrants and about the implications of it. And it's actually really cool how uh, how Namir uh, was acutely aware of both the bad optics of the word and of its original meaning, and yet he still tried to sort of spin it in a positive way by referring to the original Greek title of Tyrant. And I must admit, it's quite uh, interesting and kind of almost skillful the way he framed it, because mm, it does make sense from a certain perspective. I would still argue that it is a really bad idea to name yourselves the Tyrants, but working with what he had, he, he made a good attempt of trying to justify that name, and I thoroughly enjoyed it actually, so it's quite cool. I want you to tell me the truth about Operation Rainbird. Kontarski was never involved, was he? You used me to kill him. You're a very good soldier, Ben, but there's something you lack. Enlighten me. You can't see where the line is. You don't know how to compartmentalize yourself. You're not willing to make that sacrifice. That's what we have to do. Put up walls around the parts of our souls we want to keep sacrosanct. Barriers to protect our humanity. We're killers, Ben. It's what we're best at. Is that what you do? You're one man in here with us. Out there you're someone else. An assassin, a liar. That's not something to be proud of. That's a pattern of psychosis. You're very good at what you do, Ben. But inside, you're weak. You can't let go. I thought that might change after what happened in Australia. I had hopes. You were part of that. I want you to think very carefully about what you say next. Because this is the most important choice you will ever make. What happened in Moscow? That was not a test of your character or your loyalty. This is the test, Ben. This is what will define who you are and your future with the tyrants. Do you understand? I need to know if you can be like me, like the rest of us. Like you. You don't hide your humanity, Namir. You just tell yourself you do. But you lost it a long time ago. You and Barrett, Fedorova and the others. You're just a weapon that thinks like a man. That's a shame. I really wanted you to understand. I hate to see great potential wasted. Tell me what you did. I want the truth. I wish I could make it clear how lucky you are, Ben. Recruitment into the tyrants is not a reward that just anyone is given. You were on our radar for a long time before I came to you in Australia. I gave you the opportunity to be something greater. The falsified mission data. You had it substituted for the real thing. How? We have assets inside the Bell Tower Corporation. It wasn't difficult. Those men in your squad... They were a hindrance to you. They had to be sacrificed. It was your trial by fire. If you had perished there in the desert alongside them, then you had no place with us. But if you came out alone... I tried to save them. Sam Duarte, I could have saved his life. He was expendable. They all were. I gave the order to sabotage Rainbird because I needed to know if you were willing to live, Ben. If you had the courage to survive. You heartless fucking bastard. Survivor's guilt. The psychological profile said that was all I needed to control you. But these things are so hard to determine. Okay, that's... <laughs> this whole setup is kind of nonsensical to me, because first, I think it was really stupid for Ben Saxon to just confront Namir uh, on the spot like that. Mm, you know, it would be wiser to wait for a time when he was in a weaker position. But that I could at the very least, uh, you know, rationalize as 
uh, Saxon acting emotional because uh, of the things that he learned of um, that the death of his team was orchestrated you know it it could have made him angry and um, resentful and whatever and he wasn't thinking clearly but then it's kind of weird how uh, Namir just straight up admitted to everything uh, and he seems to think it isn't going to matter like he seems to think I'm not going to care and even further he straight up admitted to uh, like orchestrating this event for the specific reason of controlling Ben Saxon uh, you know psychologically which okay I, I could maybe buy that he would be upfront about the whole the, the weak needed to be called and they limited your potential and whatever uh, you could make you could spin that in a not maybe not in a positive way that's maybe not the best word but you could spin that like to your advantage kind of to portray yourself as very strong and goal driven and you know dependent on success but you would never in a million years like because there are people that would respond positively to something like that you know people who are themselves ruthless and um, who are themselves very concentrated on uh, results more than they are on the means they could respect your willingness to um, commit atrocities uh, you know following your, your goals there are people like that but I don't think there are people anywhere who would respond positively to knowing you manipulated them like th there is no uh, there is no way to spin manipulating somebody as a good thing to the very person you tried to manipulate in the per in the first place because either way if there are they are uh, like a righteous or you know um, a lawful person they are going to feel betrayed and even if they themselves uh, favor such underhanded and shady tactics uh, they are going to resent you for doing that and they are going to uh, see you as a rival and a threat and somebody who uh, undermined their position and they're going to take offense at that so uh, I don't think Jason Namir's strategy in this conversation makes any kind of sense but oh well and especially it's weird how it only gives me the option to end the conversation you'd think that if that is the only option I have they could have just skipped that and ended it on their own but at the very least it gave me the opportunity to elaborate a little bit on it I'm pleased I could prove you wrong The fall from the jetliner really did a number on your neuro hub. I can't believe I had to reconfigure it. All the progress you've made with your augmentations. Lost. I'll be fine. I've already started relearning the basics. I'll be using my augmentations at full strength in no time. I suppose so. Still, it's a miracle that you survived. You and me both. You did as much to hurt them as I did, but they're still looking for us. And the moment we stick our heads up, we'll be spotted. They're after us because they're afraid of what we know. We can expose them, Ben. We can get justice, not just revenge. I know that, Look, What's your plan? We've got pieces of the puzzle. We just need to put them back together. Think back to what you found on the plane. Oh. 
Operation Rainbird went down in Queensland. It was a strike mission, part of the Australian oil conflict. And Namir was there to pull you out of the ashes. Exactly. He had everything in place. So we know the tyrants have major assets in Australia. That's a start. I've been scanning the net, looking at Glass Curtain, conspiracy crew, all the activist groups. They talk about the tyrants. They have profiles, but no one takes them seriously. You think people will listen to us? Ben Saxon broke down squaddy. Anna Kelso, federal agent turned fugitive. There's always someone who will listen. <laughs> Anna, damn it. Where are your meds? Where's the neuropathy? Ben, help me. The seizures, I can't. Okay, so I probably need to find the neuropathy for her. Uh, I wonder if I'll get to use it myself. Painkillers. Well, yes. That is to say, I will, I'm going to listen to it later. For now, I think I need to find the medicine for her, right? Uh, Ebook, outer secretary. I'm going to explore it thoroughly later. Mm, Neuroposite, okay. Let's give it to her. Thanks. It's my fault. I waited too long between doses. And I know why. We're almost out. Without a supply of new pods, this will happen more often. Our augmentations will malfunction. Janus is supposed to find us a new source, right? I don't trust anyone else. I haven't spoken to our hacker friend in months. Then I guess we might have to tough it out for a while. No, I'm not going to put you at risk. I'll contact Janice now. Uh, okay, there's a couple of things I wanted to talk about uh, before I explore the apartment. Well, actually just one for now. The intro, well, that's um, maybe not precise. I mean the final part of the intro where Ben Saxon uh, jumped out of the jetliner and then fell into the sea. Mm, it was pretty cool. Uh, like the music was cool, but also the Im the the um, what's the word? The imagery of it was cool as well because it very much pretty directly uh, invoked the images of Icarus, which uh, is sort of a thematic. A running theme in Deus Ex, at least in Deus Ex Human Revolution. Mm, because, you know, not only is the slow fall argument called uh, the Icarus landing system, which I always felt is kind of an unfortunate name, uh, because I know it's supposed to mean that it's a system that Icarus would be good to have, mm, but uh, still, it makes you think, you know, Icarus, the guy that famously died via a fall, and then you have this supposedly fail-safe system named after him, I wouldn't really trust it. Uh, I don't think it's a good marketing decision. Um, but, uh, you know, he was falling, and then he literally caught fire as he did, which is, you know, also something that uh, happened to... I, I guess that happened because of friction, maybe? It's kind of weird, because it wasn't that high, so it wasn't like he was entering the atmosphere or whatever, so... And, and he didn't catch fire uh, in the beginning, when he was jumping out of the, uh, out of the plane, but maybe that was a lower altitude. But still, you know, he, he, he was falling and burning at the same time, which is, again, a very direct callback to Icarus himself, who, you know, his, his wings uh, caught fire because he flew too uh, close to the sun. So that was kind of cool. Uh, and having said that, let's explore the apartment. My approach was always direct. I was an agent, and there's no room for feelings when you have a gun pointed at you. But there was a moment after the Logan Circle event. I was shot. They told me Matt was dead. I would have cried right then and there if they hadn't taken my eyes. Oh. 
that's that's actually very sad because I guess I guess she did have a very um, you know striking eyes and I guess it's supposed to uh, they are augmented eyes um, and I guess she can't cry anymore because they they aren't organic they're probably like self lubricating in some uh, in some artificial way. Uh, so, so that's kind of sad, really, when you think about it, you know, uh, that she can't even, uh, she can't even express grief in this uh, primal way uh, because her body has been altered. Uh, interesting, okay. Let's, let's read the ebook. Praxis software. Congratulations on your recent mechanical augmentation. Yeah, so again, th this is uh, bringing up a point from Human Revolution, where apparently, like, uh, you you come uh, both Jensen and apparently Ben Saxon as well. They came with all of their augmentations sort of pre-installed, and you're only like you're not really when you buy them via the use of praxis points. You're not really. Uh, adding them, you're just sort of unlocking them. Which, I'm not sure if that makes much sense, but again, maybe that's supposed to, you, you know, make it more feasible, uh, the fact that you can do it on a spot, because it's more of a... Um, because it's more of a software thing, as opposed to actually physically adding something to your body. You know, all of the potential is already there, from the beginning, you're just slowly, as it said in the ebook itself, you're slowly adjusting to it. Can I talk some more with her, maybe? Nope. Mm, another ebook. Neuroposing withdrawal. Uh, I read that already in the tutorial stage. Mm, trash can search, search that. Okay, can't enter this room. Mm, there's like a treadmill. Mm, and I guess those are photos for from Ben Saxon's uh, army days. Now, actually, let me uh, listen to the news. We turning now to our interview with noted human augmentation expert, Dr. Isaac Tibbet, as we discuss the lack of alternatives to the drug neuropathy. Thank you, Ms. Cassan. As I was saying, anyone who receives implants or mechanical augmentation must form a permanent bond between biological tissue systems. This is at odds with the human body's natural defense mechanisms. Without treatment, glial tissue will build up around the augmentation site, causing a condition known as deroditions syndrome, or DDS. And this can be quite serious? Indeed. Even fatal, unless a proper regimen of anti-rejection pharmaceuticals are administered. You mean neuropathy? Well, yes. That is to say, neuropazine is one of the many drugs which can be used to treat this syndrome. But neuropazine is the only drug most of us have heard of. Neuropazine, or Nupose, as many people call it, produced by the Versalife Group, has enjoyed very strict patent enforcement, and that has scared away competitors. But with a new initiative being put forth by the World Health Organization, that's all about to change. Dr. Tibbet, thank you for your insights. This is Eliza Kazan, reporting live from Pikus. 
<laughs> yeah, so that's, uh, as I said, that's interesting um, as a part of a, a cyberpunk story because uh, this uh, monopoly on neuropocene uh, gives like a huge advantage uh, and huge leverage to VersaLife. Um, and I'm curious to see this game expand on it because, as, as I said, Jensen himself didn't need Neuropocene, but apparently we do, that being Anna Kelso and Bob Saxon, I mean, not Bob Saxon, what is Ben Saxon. So I wonder if I'll have to use it as a gameplay element at some point. That would be interesting. So apparently he was trying to buy Neuropocene uh, on the line, but it's a p p prescription drug, so obviously he couldn't do that uh, through limb legally um, in that way. Do they do they really have three three TVs and two of them are even in the same room? That seems a bit of an overkill if you ask me. Like okay, I can understand having one TV in the living room and one in uh, the bedroom, you know, if you're well enough to afford that, but why would you have uh, one TV in like the dining area and one TV in the kitchen. Like who puts the TV in the kitchen? It's literally three steps away from this one, which is even bigger. So what's the point of that? Like I, I don't understand that and it kind of annoys me uh, in a way, but well. Anything interesting in the bathroom? Credits? some encyclopedia child and violence yeah this is all copied from a human revolution human traffic mm. are there laws of Detroit anywhere using using force for peace <laughs> oh, that's a creepy cover uh, anything interesting here personal Wait, where am I even going? I can't go through here. Ah, okay. There's a hidden passage of sorts, which makes sense because it's a hideout after all, so... Probably doesn't have um, an easy-to-locate entrance. And concussion grenades, credits, mm, another pocket secretary. Oh, ah, that's just wait. Wait, wait, wait. Listen to this first. Nightmares. I see ghosts of all the men who died under my watch. Sometimes I see Sam in the darkness, chained, moaning, tearing at his orgs. He was a friend. I couldn't tell his family what happened, not all of it. Hell, should have been me who died, not him. Okay, so that's... Janus, are you out there? Hello, Benjamin. It's been a while. Are you and Miss Kelso safe? For now, but Anna's sick. I mean, we both are. We're running out of neuropazine. You're not the only ones. The neuropazine shortage is getting worse. Augmented people everywhere are suffering. 
Can you help us? It might be time to start looking for alternatives, Benjamin. An alternative to neuropathy? I don't have any sources that can supply you directly. The risk of exposure is too great. You're gonna have to pay a visit to the doctor. I can't go to a limb clinic. If I use any official channels, they'll track me down, and Anna and I will be on the run again. I understand that. I have a contact for you. An underground doctor who operates in Panama City. His name is Alvarez Araujo. He may be able to help. Tell me about this guy, Alvarez. Can I trust him? His past is shady. He used to be a doctor, but now he operates in the slums. It seems he has something of an altruistic streak. The poor and desperate turn to him when they can't get help elsewhere. I know how they feel. I may need to upgrade my augmentations. I don't know what kind of trouble I might get into out there. You'll need a Praxis kit for that. But your mechanical augmentations can be enhanced at any time if you have one. And you won't have to blow your cover visiting a limb clinic for an upgrade. Panama's a dangerous place. I'm gonna need some equipment, some protection if I'm going there. The city is rife with black market contacts. Providing you have the money, they'll be happy to sell you what you want, and it won't be traced back to you. Okay, I can take the maglev line straight into the city, and then I'll track down our man. Thank you, Janus, for everything. You'll pay me back one day. People always do. Good luck, Benjamin. Okay, so I leveled up, but before I look at my augmentations, I'll go to talk to Anna again. Oh, there's some credits here as well. So what did he... or she... um... I mean, what did Janice say? I'm gonna see a contact in Panama City. The maglev train leaves in an hour. You're going out there? I should come with you. No, it's too risky for us to go out together. You stay here, stay safe. This place is off the grid, no one knows about it. You know me. I'm not exactly good at doing nothing. Then don't. You still got contacts you trust, right? Use them. See what you can dig up about Namir and the tyrants. And what about you? Who's gonna keep you safe if I'm not around? Mm, okay, I'm definitely going. The non-lethal, yeah. I hope it is going to give me more ammo for the stun gun now that I have it, instead of giving me a second one. That would be kind of pointless. Don't worry. I'll keep a low profile, be discreet, and only use force when necessary. Alright, Ben. Stay in contact on the info link. Tell me what you see out there, any clues you find. I'll do the same from this end. And promise me one thing. Name it. Don't get yourself killed. We've only got each other now. Okay. Some credits on the shelf here. Okay, so the game actually crashed on me and I had to redo uh, this whole segment in the apartment. So I'm going to do another quick sweep uh, of it to see if I missed anything on that uh, on that rerun and after that I'm going to have some credits it here and I'm going to end the episode because um, it has been long enough there's a auto secretary here I don't think I listened to this one Agent Matt Ryan Ben I can't do this while you're here you're the one who wanted to do this Anna. well just
<laughs> that's, pr that's pretty silly when you think about it, because first she, when she was recording this, she asked Ben to uh, go to the other room because she didn't feel comfortable saying all those things with him there, and now I'm literally listening to her private thoughts with her in the room. That's gotta be awkward. ID file? What's that? Turnable model unlocked. I've no idea what that even means. Uh, items? What is that? Hmm. Yeah, I did get a Praxis point. Oh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Praxis points three. How do I have three? Well, I am going to buy this, just because I think it's pretty cool. It gives you additional information about the character of the NPCs and whether they are lying or not, and it gives you another chance to convince them mm, in, a, in an argument. So... Mm, yeah, I'm going to buy that. Now, I think I'm going to get another battery. Just because it's useful for hmm, cost one. So why can't I buy it then? I have one. Hmm. I'm not sure. That's a point with that. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of overlooked. I thought I had this one, but apparently this is the base one I need to buy. Mm, additional batteries is always uh, useful, you know, for uh, for takedowns. I'm just going to make a quick sweep uh, of the apartment to see if I missed anything mm, when I retried this section after the crash. Mm, pocket secretary here. I don't think I read that one. Mm, to Kel. So that's probably Anna Kelso, right? So I guess this is like an undercover news or something uh, that, that tries to um, tries to provide another angle as opposed to the official news, because uh, they were talking about a journalist that got uh, suspiciously killed right after uncovering some information that was not that beneficial to the government. Uh, okay, I think there's nothing left in here. Mm. I did read, read the email about Neuropocene. Uh, I'm not sure if I... Oh. Hm. It's weird. Why would they throw an unpacked... Uh, mm, an unpacked energy bar into the trash? That doesn't make sense. Uh, I don't think I, I listened to this one. When I met Ben, he had just defected from the tyrants. Killers without principles or compunction. They were assassins, working for some mysterious, powerful organization. I had no reason to trust Ben. At this point, they had already damaged my life. But there was something honest in his eyes. He wasn't really one of them. He was just a soldier, following orders. Okay. Oh, there's a drawer here. 
more credits. Mm, I read that ebook. Uh, Pocket Secretary. Oh, I don't think I read this one. Jade Duarte. Yeah, uh, this, 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 this home apparently belongs to the family of one of the people from Ben Saxon's squad. Oh, there are his parents. Okay. I read that. I listened to that. Uh, okay, so I think I think that's all actually. So let me save and that's all for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!